Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In today's video, I want to look at the minimal hosting model, which is something that was introduced in .NET 6 and Umbraco is now finally supporting in Umbraco 13. By supporting the minimal hosting model, Umbraco is complying with Microsoft and moving away from the old hosting model. So what, what does this mean, the minimal hosting model? Let's look at it from code. So right here in Visual Studio, we have two projects, V12 and V13. Let's start with V12. This is just a default template when we run uh, .NET new. There's nothing in it, except for the program, which we're familiar with. And what this does, uh, if you haven't looked at it before, because you're usually not going to edit this file, is it's going to run the main method, create a host builder, build it, run it. And this create the host builder method is right here. And it's uh, basically creating an application, configuring in Braco, uh, making it a web host. Then it's going to configure it. Then it's going to use static web assets and use a startup file. And the startup file, is what we're all familiar with. So this one you've already seen before, but it's a pretty big file. It's the old hosting model. It's a pretty big file, but it basically does two things. It's configuring uh, services for the DI container, adding Umbraco, back office website, everything. And then it's configuring the web app. So should we use the developer exception page, for example? Uh, we're using Umbraco, we're adding uh, some endpoints for the back office to website. So with V13, all of that code that we just saw is uh, compiled back into a single program.cs and it's even fitting on my frame. It's only 27 lines of code. You can easily migrate to this uh, model by using the v13 template and just pasting it in. Uh, but we should note a couple of things. Uh, this seems very familiar, right? But this is actually a bit different. Uh, previously, Umbraco used to uh, call the service container and add Umbraco, which will require us to add the environment and configuration, which we could still do, uh, but we don't want to. So this is the same as we saw before in the startup file. Uh, we actually want to use Create Umbraco Builder because Create Umbraco Builder adds some defaults to the host. Like you can see then, it's just calling the service container, adding, adding Umbraco, parsing an environment and a configuration. So when moving to a single program file, you should definitely make sure you're using Create Umbraco Builder and not uh, add Umbraco anymore. Uh, then once that is done and every service is configured, our app is built and then we have a web application. But something that is new is, on, is booting Umbraco in the background, right? The description said it's, says it's starting the service runtime to ensure Umbraco is ready for middleware to be added. This is a step that should definitely be done before calling any extra method on the web application. For example, use Umbraco is below it. And this is also very familiar, what we just saw in the startup file. Uh, finally, the app is being run asynchronously. And that's it for your program file. So this is nice and all, um, but how do we add our own services? Well, the builder, like we just saw before, has a services uh, property. And then we can just do, then we call, can call add code and add any class we have. Uh, I, I don't have these methods, but it works exactly the same. I could understand that this might be a bit confusing. So what I like to do in my prog projects, which have a bit more code in the, st the program file than this, or in the startup file, because we're adding a lot of stuff to the application, I actually like to um, I like to kind of merge the startup file back into this. And how can we do that? Well, first of all, I want to bring back the, the configure services method. And we can do this by using a local function. At the bottom of our program file, I'll, a I'll add the local function called configure builder. This is a static void and we'll take in our web application builder. Now we can move this code, which is right there, into this m uh, function. And then we can call it from above. This is now very similar to the configure services we had before. If I want to configure services, I'll just add a local variable called services for uh, simplicity. Now we can just call the adds code method or whatever we want from this method. It, it just adds a bit more structure. We can do the same uh, thing for this piece of code, which was previously the configure method. Below the configure builder, I will add a new uh, local function called configure, we'll, which will take in the web application as app and the web host environment as env. Now we can also move in this code. Now we can also do environment specific stuff, like if env is development, we'll add the app.use developer exception page. Now we just need to call this configure method. I chose to exclude the boot and Braco async because it's awaiting and we don't want to make this a task, but also because it's mandatory to be called first. So we'll add in the configure method and parse in the app and the app.environment, which is a web, app, uh, web host environment. Because this is uh, excluded from the configure function, uh, we make sure that this is called first and we don't accidentally put code before it. So now we have a program file, which is uh, basically refactored to be a bit more structured. Uh, just to go one step further, which is something I do not actually recommend, but just to make it a bit more familiar for you, is we can take all this code and remove it. 
and let's do it the old way. So we'll add in the the main method. So now we're back with a program uh, class with the main method. This is actually what's just being generated behind the scenes when we uh, when we use the top level program file. And now we can paste back our code in. Uh, the local functions can now just be private methods. So now the configure builder and configure are private static voids. And now we have one more problem because the main method is not a sync. And that is not a problem because we can just make this a, a sync task. Also for simplicity we can just make this a variable and a variable. And now I've grouped these things together. I think this is a bit cleaner because it's a bit more familiar when working with C Sharp. The program we previously saw uh, is also working of course. It, it doesn't add any uh, f functional benefit or something. I just think this is more recognizable. We're used to working with classes, so I like this uh, approach a bit more. So one uh, extra bonus tip to keep your program file clean. Uh, we have a weather API. We have a weather API which has just a weather client and a weather uh, client which is implementing the interface. It doesn't do anything right now. We go to your configure method and type add scope weather client and weather client. I don't really like this approach because I think it's a good practice to keep your uh, little domain separate. So instead of calling the adscom directly from the weather client, we should add a class in our uh, weather API called configure services. So now we have a configure services class which is right in our folder of weather API. And we should make this class static. Then we'll add a new method called add weather API which is returning a service collection and this method should also be static. And we want to make this a extension method on service collection. We'll type this service collection services and then return services. And this doesn't do anything right now but what we can now do is we can use the service collection to add our weather API. So this code is a bit more familiar and you might think well why would I do that for one line of code? Well, usually when we're working with uh, uh, things like this, where we have a separate client in a namespace, uh, it's usually not all. For example, this uh, client might require some configuration. So what we'll do is we'll add the iConfiguration interface as a parameter to this extension method. And we can now use this configuration parameter to check against configuration values. For example, we can check against the configuration section weather API. If it does not exist, we'll throw an exception saying that the weather, weather API section is missing in the app settings of JSON. You probably want to throw your own exception or a better one, but by throwing an exception, we make sure the program does not boot. If we try to start this and the weather API section is missing from configuration, then this will crash. It's probably a bit cleaner to do this in an extension method like this and then, then to put all this logic inside of our program. Uh, and this is a nice thing, because right now, if we go back to our program, instead of calling this directly, uh, we'll call add weather API and now we need to parse in our configuration. So we'll say build out of configuration. And this is everything we do from program. It makes it clean and it moves the responsibility to a different class. And just to prove that this is all working, uh, I'll run the V13 hosting model project. And you'll see it, it will go right into the installer. And like you can see, this, uh, this has booted successfully into the installer, which is right there. It's all working. So that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something from it. I'll just scroll through the program one last time, just so we can see the code. Thanks for watching, that was all. Bye.